You are listening to the Cellulite Site Podcast with Bree Cox Kennedy, episode number one. Unveiling the Cellulite Site Podcast, a journey of courage, compassion, and commitment. Welcome to the Cellulite Site, where we meet cellulite challenges with care, confidence, commitment, community, compassion, concern, consistency, and courage. And now your host, Bree Cox Kennedy. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Cellulite Site podcast. I am beyond honored and thrilled that you're here. This journey to create a podcast dedicated to cellulite has been a reflective and profound one, fueled by personal reasons, as well as a deep calling to share my story. The journey to embark on this venture dedicated to cellulite has been a contemplative one (laughs) marked by various reasons, as you can probably imagine. The decision to delve into the topic really wasn't an easy one. Despite the facade of confidence that my life may project, well, the truth is I grapple with insecurities especially when it comes to the cellulite that seems to be an unwelcome companion with each passing year. Opening up about these challenges is vulnerable and daunting. But I believe in the power of shared experiences that creates human connection and a sense of belonging. The first reason behind this vast venture is my own realization that if I don't hold myself accountable, and take daily proactive steps, my condition will clearly only worsen. I've developed a plan of action that I call the cellulite circuit. It's a routine that involves seven simple steps designed to be seamlessly integrated into your day. It's a commitment not just to myself, but to you, my listeners and friends a promise to be accountable and transparent. What I'm proposing is not just a daily commitment. It's a lifestyle commitment, a lifelong lifestyle commitment. We'll explore the intricacies of the cellulite circuit in episode two, revealing an approach that embraces self-care from the inside out. So stay tuned for more details on that. Another factor that made me hesitate before committing to this venture is the need for a significant amount of courage. Courage plays a pivotal role in sharing my deepest insecurities. In the tapestry of my early teen years, there was a particular thread woven by an innocuous book called cellulite. Lose those lumps, bumps, and bulges you couldn't lose before. A relic from the literary landscape of 1975 that my stepmom possessed. Little did I realize that this seemingly harmless book would unfurl a world of awareness, shaping the contours of my thoughts during those very impressionable years. Reflecting on that chapter of my life, I can't help but wonder if encountering that book was a double-edged sword. While it held the potential to be a tool for understanding and empowerment, I unwittingly internalized its messages, spiraling them into a realm of heightened fear regarding cellulite. The small book became a formidable force, setting the trajectory for my thoughts to orbit around this perceived imperfection. In the labyrinth of my youth, I adopted a belief that now seems almost whimsical. The notion that carbonation caused cellulite. Oddly enough, soda was never part of my experience. I could count the instances of me sipping on the carbonated beverages on one hand. Yet, in my youthful conviction, I convinced myself that steering clear of carbonation would be my shield against cellulite. 
a myth, as it turns out, for cellulite found its way into my life regardless. Now, ladies, don't get me wrong. I am not here to champion the consumption of sugary carbonated drinks. Far from it. You will never see me drinking one. My journey, marked by myths and misconceptions, has taught me that cellulite is a complex interplay of factors, not a consequence solely tied to a particular dietary choice. I share this not as a green light for unhealthy habits, but as a testament to the intricate nature of our bodies. Perhaps every twist and turn, every misguided belief I've weathered regarding cellulite has led me to this juncture, a point in my life where I can shed the cloak of fear and share my expansive wealth of knowledge. It's a vulnerability that I embrace, hoping that my experiences can resonate with others, guiding them toward a path of understanding, self-acceptance, and a more nuanced perspective on the stories our bodies tell. As I grew out of those formidable years of my life and entering my early 20s, rather than celebrating the tall, thin physique that I had, I battled in silence with what I would later learn is called body dysmorphia. It wasn't something that I ever grew out of. I found myself constantly critiquing my appearance as cellulite seemed to be taking over inch by inch. Have you ever found yourself wearing a cover-up not just to the pool or beach, but in (laughs) the pool or beach? Don't laugh, because I have. And I still do. If I even dare go to a pool at a beautiful resort, my default would be to find any excuse as to why I was not able to go in the first place. I would be too busy or have too much work to do. After all, aren't you supposed to work while taking holiday at the romantic lakefront Villa de Est in beautiful Lake Como or vacationing at Eden Rock on St. Bart's where the turquoise water beckons visitors to paddleboard, snorkel, or swim? (laughs) But ladies, just imagine if, at a young age, We were all taught that cellulite is nothing to be ashamed of. It's a natural condition that isn't our fault. I vividly recall my first encounter at the age of 20, an experience that left an emotional scar that persisted for years. Picture this and see if you can relate. I was lying on my bed engrossed in a book when my boyfriend at the time walked in. As we chatted, I noticed that his gaze shifted to my legs, and he probed me with a deep poke, asking, Do you have cellulite? He seemed to be highlighting a weakness, pinpointing an event that stayed etched in my memory for years. In my youth, At that vulnerable and impressionable age, I lacked the mental fortitude to brush off the impact of his words. The information that I had seen in that book from 1975 came flooding into my memory. Fast forward over the past three decades, I remained unconscious to my thoughts, resisting the condition. I wasted so much energy spending hours pondering my imperfections and brainstorming ways to quote-unquote correct them. Unfortunately, I encountered too many professionals in the industry who were all too eager to take my money, and I was all too eager to make it all disappear. I felt like a guinea pig while regretting decisions that only exasperated the problem. In another episode, I'll share the treatments that I underwent, treatments that proved to be a waste of time and money, leaving me more mentally scarred than before. 
What I failed to grasp that back then, but understand now, is that my thoughts were contributing to the issue. In the past few years, I definitely have seen my condition worsen, though, for real. Particularly since 2020. In December of 2019, while vacationing at the beach, I could tolerate or conceal the areas where my cellulite bothered me. However, as global events unfolded in March of 2020, my anxiety became overwhelming and persisted for the next 18 months. Two weeks into the global shutdown, Making dinner for my boyfriend became a nightly occurrence, and so did opening a bottle of wine. Before I recognized it, my neural networks were programmed. For me, seeing that bottle of wine on the counter with two glasses gave me a sense of calm, along with a release of the anxiety that was prevalent in my everyday life due to all the uncertainty in the world. My exercise regimen was also compromised, or should I confess, non-existent at the same time due to a large project that I was working on. I was working up to 14-hour days for months at a time in my desk chair behind my computer. I'm wondering if anyone else can relate to using distractions like snacks and wine to cope with stress and boredom during challenging times. I know I did. During those long working hours, I would use snacks during the day to keep me company. Mixed nuts, so-called protein bars, maybe some fruit. And if I was at my desk through dinner, I don't have to tell you, I had a glass of wine on my desk, all to distract me and mask the feeling of boredom and fear. Sitting in a largely inactive state for nearly two years had lived led to a significant development of fascia on my legs. As discussed earlier in this podcast, women often prioritize the needs of others over their own, and this was certainly true for me. Fast forward four quick years later, and I won't even wear shorts while in my own home. (laughs) Well, that's a test to see if you're listening. I know I'm going to get heat for that one. But we have to laugh, right? And in all seriousness, my wardrobe truly is getting more and more limited with each passing year, eliminating clothing that doesn't cover my cellulite. I find that the condition is affecting my desire to engage in the outdoor activities that I enjoy participating in simply because I'm just not comfortable in the clothing that's required. So ladies, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm telling you all of this personal information. I wanted to provide a backdrop of history and why I have dedicated and decided to create an open platform to discuss cellulite. I'm creating a resource where women can find information on any and every topic as it relates to cellulite. While there are countless millions of articles from doctors, physical therapists, surgeons, clinics, skincare experts, and more, what seemed to be missing was a unified source encompassing all of this knowledge. My goal is to create a dependable resource that consolidates what works, what doesn't, the latest trends, studies, nutrition, as well as focusing on what to avoid. My mission is to streamline the process, reducing the time that it takes for you to uncover tools and techniques that yield the results you're seeking. I'm approaching my commitment to this journey with total compassion for myself. I get goosebumps just by saying that as I have a genuine care for myself more than I ever have. I was 53 before I decided to stop looking at my body as defective. And as I approach another birthday, I have a new level of awareness where I find myself at peace 
with where I am. Finally, I decided that I will no longer look in a reflection or a mirror with shame or disgust. It's time for total acceptance and love. Who's with me, ladies? <laughs> this is what I truly want for every woman. Today is January 1st, but that's not the reason I woke up this morning with the conviction and the commitment to the Cellulite Site podcast. I ask myself, how can I use my life experiences to help others who may be in the same position as I find myself? If my story can help even one beautiful woman out there facing similar challenges, then sharing becomes a worthwhile endeavor. I would be doing an injustice to myself, my body, and anyone else who would love to overcome the condition if I kept my cellulite to myself. <laughs> so I will share it with you. And during our journey, we will be discussing everything cellulite related. We will cover topics such as negative emotions and the role they play on cellulite. Supplements that can help support the body and play a role in the reduction of cellulite. Guidance from professionals and their expertise to provide informed decision-making and comprehensive understanding of treatments. External treatments that you can do at home to reduce cellulite. Product spotlights that promise a visible reduction in cellulite. And why it's never too early to start a preventative routine. So my friends, welcome to 2024, my year of wholehearted self-acceptance and love. I am so thrilled to invite you on this journey with me and so honored that you're here as we discover new ways to nurture and guide ourselves. Join me in exploring the multifaceted world of cellulite and let's face it together with courage, compassion, and commitment. Stay tuned for more episodes where we uncover the truths about cellulite and embark on a journey towards self-acceptance and love. It is my absolute dream to help women find peace and acceptance with where we are, but at the same time, provide empowering strategies for helping us become the best versions of ourselves. Visit us at thecellulitesite.com for inspiration and valuable information. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms for daily doses of encouragement and get ready for an exhilarating transformation. If you've found the information in this podcast helpful, please consider sharing it with friends and loved ones who you think could benefit from it. My goal is to be a source of empowerment for women worldwide. Empower your journey one day at a time, my beautiful friends. I love you and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning into the Cellulite Site. We appreciate you being part of our community, dedicated to exploring and sharing insights on cellulite health. Connecting with confident women like you is what makes this journey so fulfilling. Our mission is to simplify your path to progress and spare you from months of uncertainty. If you're ready to take your journey to the next level, visit thecellulitesite.com to grab your cellulite circuit checklist. Embark on your transformative journey today and in the coming weeks, witness firsthand how these concepts can make a positive impact. Remember, it's not just about absorbing information intellectually, it's about committing to the work and celebrating the results. A quick reminder, the content shared is based on personal experiences and perspectives and is not medical advice.